Hey everybody, welcome back to my second video about threads. Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy inter-semester break, whatever it is you're celebrating right now. It's great to be back and I hope you're having a great vacation from your classes. Today I want to continue the thread topic that we started last time. So last time I showed you how to create new threads so that your programs can work on more than one thing concurrently. If you missed that video, you should probably go watch it first because it will make what I'm going to talk about today make a lot more sense. And today I want to pick up where I left off last time by showing you how to pass arguments to threads and get results from threads. So let's go back and look at our example from last time. So remember that it, with pthreads, that's what we're using, a threads thread function takes one argument, a void pointer, and it returns a void pointer. And now the reason for the void pointers is that it's generic. A void pointer can point to anything. So this really makes it easy to pass any data type and return any data type from a thread function. So, so say I want to pass a variable to my thread. Let's use an int for simplicity and we can pass a pointer to that int by passing it as the last argument in thread create, just like this. Now when our thread function is called, this void pointer argument will point to that integer. It's void, so we do have to tell the compiler that it's an int, that's a pointer to an int. And then let's print it out along with our counter each time through the loop, and then let's increment its value. So now let's go down and go back to main, and we're gonna set that int to five just so we can see what's going on. And we can print out its final value after the thread finishes, So that works well enough. We're able to pass data to our threads. Now let's return something. So right now the integer is starting in the main thread and being passed to the thread. So what if instead we wanted the thread to allocate some memory and then give it back to main when it's finished? Okay, so that's easy. All we have to do is we're gonna remove the declaration of v, we're gonna malloc a new integer in the thread function, and we're gonna increment that integer as we go. And then we're gonna return that integer when the thread is done. Okay, but so how do we get it back to main? For that, we need to come back down to thread join. You'll remember from last time that thread join's job is to wait until a thread is finished. But the other thing that thread join does is it allows us to get the return value from the function. That's what that second argument to thread join does. We left it as null in our last example. And when you leave it as null, you're basically saying, I don't care what the thread returned, just tell me when it's done. But now we're returning allocated memory from the thread, so we really do care what's coming back. And so when we do care, we need to give it a pointer, and it's a pointer to a pointer. Okay, so let's declare a pointer that thread join can set to the value the thread returns. Okay, so we're gonna pass in, we're gonna, we pass in its address, and after thread join returns, then we have our return value. And then just to, so you can see that it's working, let's print out the integer value that join returns. Okay, and then let's run it. And, and there you go. We were able to get the int pointer that was returned by the thread. Now remember, that what it's returning is the pointer. It's returning an address. It's always returning an address. We just happen to be storing a pointer at that address. So this could point to anything else. It could point to a struct or an array or just a big block of bytes that I happen to allocate on the heap. It doesn't really matter. Thread join is just saying, hey, that pointer that was returned from the thread function, I'll give it to you. Here's what it was. So that's all the time I have for today. I hope that this helps you make your threaded programs more capable. And join me next time when I talk about concurrency and parallelism and about why threads can be super dangerous and what you can do about it.